doubling time of COVID-19 cases in the Philippines is slowing down according to experts. Metro Manila, Central Luzon and Calabarzon to experience stricter ACQ says the Philippine National Police. The Transportation Department eyes the partial operation of buses and trains upon the lifting of the Luzon-wide enhanced community quarantine. President Rodrigo Duterte has no decision yet on the proposal to extend class suspensions in the country. Mundinlupa City Mayor not in favor of transfer of COVID-19 positives from the Correctional Institution for Women to the New Belibid Prison. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson under fire over handling of the coronavirus crisis. The Department of Health says the country is seeing an improvement in the doubling of coronavirus cases. Aiko Miguel explains why. Experts have noticed that the doubling time of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the country is slowing down with a five-day average doubling time. According to the Department of Health spokesperson under Secretary Maria Rosario Vergere, this is good news because COVID-19 cases usually double in an average of three days. Ito ay malaking improvement. Pero siyempre, mas gusto natin na mahigit sa 30 araw ang ating doubling time. Ibig sabihin, kung kahapon, April 20, 6,000 ang ating kaso, dapat sa May 20, 12,000 pa lang ang kaso natin kung gusto natin na 30 days ang ating doubling time. Another good news the official said is that there are 30 provinces in the country that remain COVID-19 free. But the DOH is also well aware and should not be complacent because a second wave may occur like what other countries have been experiencing like Singapore, South Korea and China. Nakita natin sa ibang bansa na talagang pwedeng maging taksil o traidor ang coronavirus na kinakalaban natin sa ngayon. Sa panahong akala mo na natalo mo na siya, bigla siyang magbabalik at maghahasik ng lagim, kaya wag na wag po tayong magiging complacent. According to Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, the Philippines is now at the stage where the flattening of the curve is almost attained. But we still have to wait in the coming days for the results, he added. Uh, na, na plateau natin, pero hindi pa talaga umabot doon sa uh, uh, flattening to the extent that we uh, would have wanted it. We have several more days to see if uh, the plateau will now reflect a uh, beginning downtrend. The DOH reminds the public to obey the rules and laws being implemented during ECQ seriously for the country to reach the goal of flattening the curve. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The enhanced community quarantine will be implemented in Metro Manila, Central Luzon, and Calabarzon area. This is according to the Philippine National Police Chief. Lea Ilagan has the details why. 800 Army Reservists and 12 teams or 116 personnel from the PNP Special Action Force were deployed to help local police in implementing the social distancing protocols. Aming ipatutupad simula ngayon ang mahigpit na enhanced community quarantine ayon sa Bayanihan Act sa buong Luzon, particularly sa Metro Manila, Region 3 at Calabarzon, at kayun din sa mga piling lugar ng ating mga lokal na pamahalaan sa buong bansa para sa kaligtasan ng buhay ng bawat Pilipino AFP spokesperson Marine Brigadier General Edgar Arevalo says 500 reservists have been deployed in Manila and Quezon cities and 300 in Paranaque and Pasay cities. PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa says SAF troopers go on duty from 6 in the morning until noon every day in Manila, Pasay, Pasig, Taguig, Las Piñas, Caloocan, Muntinlupa, Paranaque and Marikina cities. We need to do this because we also want to mitigate the continued risk faced by frontline PNP personnel who are exposed to increasing number of people and motorists violating the ECQ at checkpoints. General Gamboa also warns violators of arrests and charges. These violations of law carry 
with it appropriate penalties and fines, tedious judicial process, and the implications of a derogatory record to their personal criminal profile. Based on data from Philippine National Police, the Southern Police District has the highest record of violators with more than 15,000. Northern Police District with 7,407, followed by Eastern, Quezon City, and Manila Police Districts. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Transportation Department is considering to resume its operation of mass transportation, including buses and trains, but abbreviated. Joan Nano explains why. The Department of Transportation is looking into the possibility of allowing buses and trains in Metro Manila to operate partially once the ECQ in Luzon is lifted. This possibility includes public utility buses, MRT3, LRT Lines 1 and 2, and the Philippine National Railways or PNR. But this will be determined depending on the final decision of the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, according to Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade. If the partial operation of mass transportation resumes, the number of passengers will be limited. The aim is to comply with the social distancing policy and to prevent the possible transmission of COVID-19. Kung papayagan ho ng ITF, magpaparsyar operability tayo, pero, pero yung operational capacity will be abbreviated. The DOTR is also considering to resume the operations of inter-island ferries and provincial buses, especially in areas that remain COVID-19 free. The IATF EID has given a green light to the Transportation Department to continue the construction of 13 railway projects that halted because of the ECQ. This will be under the condition that physical distancing is practiced and a skeleton force is deployed. Dalawang bagay ang ginagawa namin ngayon sa mitigation phase. Yung paglatag ng bagong riles at yung pag-relocate ng mga utilities. Napaka-ideal ho na maumpisaan ngayon ito pagkat hindi gumagamit at hindi operational. Joan Ano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. President Rodrigo Duterte may announce his decision on whether or not he will lift, extend, or modify the Luzon Wide Enhanced Community Quarantine scheduled to end on April 30. The chief executive has also yet to decide on the recommendation to suspend classes until December of 2020. Rosalie Cos reports why. The president's former top aide, Senator Bongo, said yesterday the president wants the public to prepare for whatever his decision will be on the enhanced community quarantine in Luzon at least a week before April 30. President Rodrigo Duterte will also weigh his options for class suspensions amid the coronavirus pandemic. Some experts from the University of the Philippines recommend the government to further suspend classes until December to prevent the further transmission of the deadly virus. Nakita po doon sa models na yung interaction ay pinakamalaki kapag ka yung mga bata ang nag interact In fact, it's roughly around 56%. At base doon sa mga models, kapag tayo ay walang klase, ito po ay nirerekomenda kapag walang klase hanggang December, ay malaki po ang maibabawas natin sa transmission ng COVID-19. However, Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque said one expert has raised the issue of graduating medical and nursing students, especially this time of health crisis. Rekomendasyon po yan ng UP. Uh, wala pa pong uh, decision ng Presidente. So, malaki po ang uh, maitutulong sa pag- uh, um, bagal ng kalat ng sakit kung isususpinde ang mga klase hanggang college level. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Department of Education or DepEd is eyeing to open classes in the country in August instead of June this year. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. The Department of Education considers the security and health of the 29 million students and around 1 million teachers and non-teaching staffers in making the decision for the opening of classes for the school year 2020-2021. DepEd Secretary Leonor Briones said 
They have consulted several stakeholders from different sectors on the issue. Briones said most are in favor of opening classes in August instead of June. Karamihan uh, nagsasabi para may panahon tayo na maghanda sa pagbabago ng edukasyon, pagba, uh, pagbabago ng pamamaraan ng magturo, at saka kailangan masigurado natin malinis at safe yung ating pagkataan. Uh, karamihan sa nagre-respond ay para sa August. DepEd has also launched online surveys to gather the opinion of the public on matters regarding online learning, homeschooling, and many others. According to the Secretary, this is to ensure that their actions will be data-driven. If the school year will begin in August, Secretary Briones said they will make use of the extra two months to hone the teachers and improve school facilities. Uh, continuing uh, learning, uh, continuing uh, program natin, ang curriculum uh, dapat uh, pagpatuloy na baguhin uh, at saka yung ating mga infrastructure, magmuna natin, monitor natin ang gusto, ang ating facilities, learning materials, lahat-lahat na. But the final decision still lies on the President with the recommendation from the IATF. Alam naman natin na ang AITF, pinag-aralan ng gusto ang kabuo ang sitwasyon sa ating bansa hinggil sa ECQ. Kaya kung ano man ang rekomendasyon ng AITF at ng uh, desisyon ng presidente, dahil ang presidente ang magdidesisyon ito, uh, may influence ito kung kailan magbukas ang klase. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Professional Regulatory Commission has postponed most of the licensure examinations scheduled in the months of May and June. Vincent Arboleda is back to tell us why. In order to ensure the safety and health of examinees and employees, the Professional Regulatory Commission has issued an advisory postponing most of the scheduled examinations slated for the months of May and June this year. The advisory was issued by the PRC as compliance to the Republic Act No. 11469 or the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act declaring a state of national emergency over the country due to the crisis brought about by COVID-19. Postponed exams include a civil engineer licensure examination, licensure examination for chemical engineers, licensure exam for certified public accountants, Dentists Licensure Examination Dental Hygienists Licensure Examination Nurses Licensure Exam Criminologists Licensure Exam Environmental Planners Licensure Exam and the Licensure Examination for Interior Designers. However, the Architect's Licensure Examination is not included among those postponed and will thus proceed on schedule for June 28 and June 30, 2020 as agreed by the Architecture Board of PRC. Meanwhile, applications for the examinations with a deadline of April 15 to April 30 was extended by the PRC until further notice. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, just in Foreign Affairs, Secretary Teddy Loxin Jr. revealed minutes ago that the Philippines has filed two diplomatic protests against China. That one is on the pointing of a radar gun at a Philippine Navy ship in Philippine waters. The other is on declaring portions of the Philippine territory as part of Hainan province. Now, here's the updated count of coronavirus cases around the globe as of today. The COVID-19 pandemic has now reached a total of 2,578,930 confirmed cases in 185 countries and territories. The uh, fast-spreading 
Disease has claimed over 178,000 lives, but almost 700,000 patients across the world have recovered from the disease. The United States of America has surpassed the 800,000 mark as of today with 825,306. Of that number, 75,673 are now green cases. Spain, meanwhile, recorded more than 4,000 additional cases from yesterday, now at 208,389. Italy, France, and Germany, and the United Kingdom are the next countries that have surpassed 100,000 cases of COVID-19. Turkey, on the other hand, is the country outside Europe and the United States of America with the highest number of coronavirus cases now with more than 95,000, but with almost 15,000 recoveries. Iran, China, and Russia are among the top 10 countries worst hit by the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, the Philippines Health Department reported at 4 p.m. today 111 new confirmed COVID-19 cases, bringing the total to 6,710. While we mourn as the country loses nine more patients to the invisible enemy, the death toll is now at 446. Our medical frontliners have helped 39 more patients to recover from the diseases, which brings the total green cases in the country to 693. The National Center for Mental Health Management confirms that six out of the eight patients who died recently lost their battle against COVID-19. The facility is now on lockdown. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The health department yesterday updated that 75 patients and staffers from the National Center for Mental Health or NCMH in Mandaluyo City tested positive for COVID-19. Of that number, 13 are patients, 62 are NCMH employees. The DOH also reported that one patient and four employees have recovered from the disease. In the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon, NCMH Chief Dr. Roland Cortez said that eight patients on that report had died, six due to COVID-19. 19. All of the eight fatalities had pre-existing medical conditions. Yung ating namatay na walo ay they are cremated within a certain period of time na hindi lalagpas po sa 12 hours. The rest mm -hmm. is already uh, being uh, taken care of by the Mandulu yung City Health Office po. The DOH is continuously coordinating with NCMH to monitor the health conditions of the health workers and COVID-19 patients. The psychiatric patients with COVID-19 are isolated inside the facility. Asymptomatic healthcare workers, on the other hand, are admitted and isolated in different hospitals. According to Dr. Cortez, NCMH is currently on lockdown. He also denied that they have been hiding reports of confirmed COVID-19 cases. They also call for PPE donations for their healthcare workers. Workers. NCMH is in need of 1,000 test kits for suspect COVID-19 cases, he added. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, there are 19 cases of COVID-19 reported in the Correctional Institution for Women. 18 are persons deprived of liberty and one is a jail worker. The inmates have been transported to the National Penitentiary. Sherwin Kulubong details why. 18 inmates from the Correctional Institution for Women or CIW in Mandaluyong City were brought to the New Believed Prison earlier today. In today's episode of Get It Straight with Daniel Razon, Bureau of Corrections spokesperson Gabriel Chaklag said the PDLs are either asymptomatic or experiencing mild symptoms. The cases are being observed in a quarantine area within the National Penitentiary in Muntinlupa City. Chaklag also assured there is nothing to worry about because the 300-bed quarantine area is far from the inmates and the residents' areas. The official added that once the PDL's conditions improve, they will be immediately brought to the Muntinlupa Hospital. Bucor calls on various sectors for donations like vitamins for inmates to help strengthen their immune system. Meanwhile, tests are underway on other PDLs who had contact with the positive cases. One stopper in the CIW has also tested positive for the disease. The CIW houses more than 3,400 PDLs according to Bucor's data. Sherwin Kulubong. 
UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Following that report, the local chief executive of Muntinlupa City is not in favor of the transfer of PDLs from the correctional facility in Mandaluyong to their city. Macreli Cordova tells us why. Muntinlupa City Mayor Jaime Fresnedi expresses dismay over the transfer of 18 PDLs from the Correctional Institution for Women positive for COVID-19 to the medium security compound in the new Bilibid prison in their city. Mayor Fresnedi said the transfer was done without coordination with the city government. He is not in favor of such move. According to the Bureau of Collections, there are five buildings within the medium security compound that will be used as isolation facilities for inmates infected with the new coronavirus. Bucor spokesperson Gabriel Chaklag clarified they had coordinated with the Muntinlupa City Health Office on the COVID-19 from the correctional facility. Nag-uusap na si ang doktor namin sa City Health Officer niya. Uh, baka hindi, hindi sila nagka, ano, yung iniisip lang naman ni General Bantol kasi hindi pwedeng ihalo natin sila sa mga quarantine area ng gobyerno. Meron naman tayong area dito. At sa uh, matagal ng plano nito, alam ng CHO yung Chief Health Office na Muntinupa at uh, ICRC. Chuck Lag allays the fears of residents around Bilibid of possible transmission of the disease because the NBP quarantine facility is 6 kilometers away. Mac Cordova, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Cebu City Jail today records 123 new coronavirus disease infections as authorities rush to decongest jails amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Gladys Toabi tells us why. Cebu City Mayor Edgar Labella confirmed today that 139 new cases of COVID-19 were recorded in the city, 123 of which are from the city jail. No data is readily available as to how many of them are inmates. The Cebu City Jail previously reported four COVID-19 cases, two jail guards and two detainees, one of whom has already died. Last week, the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology reported that nine inmates and nine jail personnel of Quezon City Jail also contracted the disease. The Bureau of Corrections also recorded 20 infections in the Correctional Institution for Women in Mandaluyong City, 19 inmates and a member of the health staff. These as authorities rush to ease congestion in the country's mostly overpopulated jails and detention facilities. The Department of Justice today announced it has approved a simplified process for early release of qualified prisoners. Under the interim rules, most of paperwork required are already dispensed with except for the certification of no pending case, court certification of no appeal, and an NBI records check. An inmate who has already served the minimum period of his sentence can be granted early release by the Board of Pardons and Parole. Prisoners aged 65 and above who already served a minimum of five years of their sentence. And those who have serious health conditions as certified by the Department of Health will also be qualified for executive clemency. However, those convicted of heinous crimes and drug-related cases and those considered high risk by the Bureau of Corrections are not covered by the faster process. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The city government of Taguig formally began its drive through and barangay-based COVID-19 testing for its residents. The aim is to increase the city's testing capacity in a bid to curb the transmission of the coronavirus disease. The city will conduct the COVID-19 testing in the health center of every barangay. For Taguig City residents with vehicles, they may undergo the drive through test at facilities in Bonifacio Global City and Taguig Lakeshore located in Lower Bicutan. Since March, Taguig City has tested over 1,000 residents. A group of Philippine exporters believes that local manufacturers may have the capacity to supply more than 100,000 PPEs that the country requires daily amid the fight against COVID-19. Here's, here's Asher Kadapan Jr. to tell us why. 
The Confederation of Wearables Exporters of the Philippines or CONWEP is now able to locally produce about 10,000 sets of medical grade personal protective equipment or PPE coveralls daily. This is just a fraction of the government's required number of PPEs per day reaching about 120,000. But CONWEP is optimistic in establishing additional PPE factories by attracting more investors. A single shift, six days a week, we just put that up to seven days and double shift. You're looking at one group producing already at 20,000 to 25,000 a day. And if we have about four of them, we can easily match, we can, if we have four in the group producing equally the same, kaya namin yung 100,000 a day. Today, 10,000 locally made medical grade PPE coveralls were turned over to the Philippine General Hospital or PGH in joint efforts with the Department of Trade and Industry. UPPGH Director Dr. Gerardo Legaspi is thankful for the PPE donations they continuously receive. However, he appeals to hospital administrators and healthcare workers to create a system to optimize the use of PPEs. We can produce as many as we, we could, but still it will not be lacking if you don't develop a system uh, of, of conserving them. No? So I think the uh, participation of the end users, the hospitals, the healthcare workers is also very important in ensuring that we optimize this uh, very precious commodity. No? Based on the government's 90-day requirement, 11 million PPEs, but only about a million is in stock. Different government agencies and private sectors work hand in hand for the procurement of more PPE. Asher Gadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Social Welfare and Development distributed financial assistance at Barangay San Bartolome in Novaliches, Quezon City. According to Barangay Captain Dong Pascual, of the 9,000 indigents in their barangay, more than 5,800 were given aid under the government's social amelioration program. Though residents had cramped inside the school campus previously, physical distancing was observed today as beneficiaries lined up at San Bartolome Elementary School when they received their benefits. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration, or PAGASA, recorded a 42 degrees Celsius heat index in Quezon City at 1.50 p.m. today. This is one of the highest heat index indexes since the onset of the dry season in the Philippines. The weather authority said good weather will prevail in most parts of the country in the next 24 hours. There are, however, possibilities of thunderstorms mostly in the afternoon. No tropical cyclone is expected to affect the country until this weekend. The local government of Palawan in Occidental Mindoro Province seeks subsidy for electricity. Ray Pelayo explains why. Even Mayor Carl Michael Pangilinan of Paluan Occidental Mindoro was surprised with a sudden price increase of electricity supplied by local provider Solar Para Sabayan or SPSB. Siyempre, nagulat din kami lahat dito ng nagtaas yung bill. Kasi nga, hindi nagkaroon nung tinatawag natin public hearing, public consultation because of the COVID. SPSB, who has an agreement with the municipality, has been providing electricity in the remote towns of Paluan for the past two years using solar energy. JC, a Filipino worker in the Middle East whose family is in Paluan, has reported the matter to UNTV program Servisyong Bayanihan. According to JC, his household was billed 18 pesos per kilowatt hour, which is almost double the 10.50 pesos per kilowatt hour previous power rate. Mayor Pangilinan said he has escalated the matter to the Energy Regulatory Commission or ERC. UNTB has asked the ERC about the issue. The ERC said they need to check their records before commenting, adding that they are having difficulty addressing the issue right away 
due to the ECQ. Mayor Pangilinan said he has also written to Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi to seek help especially in subsidizing their electricity. According to Mayor Pangilinan, SPSB's rate is higher than other providers because it is not subsidized unlike electric cooperatives in the country. He said, however, SPSB has extended the grace period and consumers may pay their bills until July. Based on the SPSB memorandum on the tariff increase, one of the reasons for such a power rate hike is improvement of its services. It stresses rates will be rolled back once improvement projects are completed. Mayor Pangilinan said the National Power Corporation or NAPOCOR has notified them in 2016 that it will no longer supply electricity in the area so he had searched for a solution. Kung talagang mamahal mga taong bayan, ang isa kong way ay ibalik kami sa ating sistema na 8 oras lang ang kurente namin. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Some senators expressed opposition to the idea of allowing Pogo operations in the country to resume amid the COVID-19 crisis. Arlene Delgado clarifies why. So, ang Pogo po, uh, kabahagi po yan siguro ng uh, isang industriya na nagbibigay ng uh, cash resource sa presidente sa ating uh, pamahalaan sa pamamagitan ng uh, buwis. At uh, ang tatanungin po natin is ano yung risk um, na pinopost ng operation ng Pogo. This was Malacanang's response to the calls to resume Pogo operations in the country to generate money for the COVID-19 crisis. However, some lawmakers do not subscribe to the idea. Senate Committee Chair on Labor and Employment, Senator Joel Villanueva says the Pogo industry has a huge potential of spreading the disease. He also asked the reason why should Pogo operators be allowed to operate when most of them are not paying taxes to the government. Senate Minority Leader Franklin Rilo is totally against the move, saying that the pogo industry is not an essential industry. Senator Kiko Pangilinan also questioned the idea that the aim is to boost state funds, noting that it was the Department of Finance itself who said that most pogo operators do not pay taxes. Meanwhile, Senate Pro Tempore Ralph Rector says he is in favor of a work-from-home arrangement. Otherwise, he would rather allow construction workers and farmers to go back to work. For Senator Risa Hon Veros, what the government should do is to demand China to pay the unpaid Pogo taxes and the country's damages to the West Philippine Sea. The lady senator claims China has over 200 billion pesos worth of environmental damages in the West Philippine Sea, plus the 50 billion pesos unpaid taxes in the Pogo industry. Pogos are simply not worth it and it's way past time to say goodbye to Pogos. Pontevero says she will study whether there is a need to file a resolution to urge the Philippine government to ask China to pay its multi-billion alleged damages. Horlin Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Voters who went to the polls in Milwaukee, Wisconsin stood in long lines many for several hours in order to cast their ballots on April 7. Now, officials link seven coronavirus cases to the in-person voting. Aaron Romero details why. At least seven people contracted the coronavirus during Wisconsin's primary election on April 7, Milwaukee health officials said on Tuesday. The seven cases include six voters and one poll worker in Milwaukee the state's largest city, where nearly 200 voting locations were paired back to five and there were hours-long lines to cast ballots, the Office of Milwaukee Health Commissioner Jeanette Kowalik confirmed. The number of election-related infection could grow as the 14-day incubation period ends today, health officials said. As of Tuesday afternoon, Milwaukee had 1,697 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The respiratory disease caused by the new coronavirus and 92 deaths related to the virus. Wisconsin has 4,620 confirmed cases and 242 deaths overall according to city and state data. Aaron Romero, UNTV News and Rescue.
We serve the people. We give glory to God. A third migrant facility in Greece is hit by the new coronavirus. Miguel Rey de Leon explains why. Authorities reported 150 cases of coronavirus in a migrant's hostel in southern Greece on Tuesday. The hostel in the town of Kranidi houses mainly migrants from Africa and had been quarantined since April 16 after the first case was detected in a pregnant woman. About 497 people lived and worked in the hostel. Two of the 150 cases are aid workers. Monitoring of contacts of the employees continues, as well as prioritizing the selection of any vulnerable groups in case they need further care or hospital treatment. So far, we have not found any symptomatic patients that need further care. Siodras adds they continue to do well because of the measures and everyone's good behavior after quickly realizing the threat of the coronavirus. The curve of the seriously ill patients is decreasing. Siodras said the r naught or the reproduction number, a key feature of epidemics, is below 1. This describes the number of people on average who will catch a disease from a single infected person. If that number can be brought down to below 1.0, this signals that an epidemic will decline. There are more than 100,000 migrants and refugees in Greece. Greece, in lockdown since March 23, has registered 2,401 infections since its first case of the virus in late February. The death toll is 121. Teodras said only 6 of 156 new cases on Tuesday were not from Kranidi. Miguel Rey de Leon, UNTV News & Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. As they lose their bread and butter in a neighboring country, Venezuelan migrants are now homebound. Chris Perez reports why. Venezuelan migrants in neighboring Ecuador set out on perilous journeys to return to their homelands weakened with crisis or to join family in other Latin American countries. Most of them have lost their sources of income due to lockdowns meant to contain one of the worst coronavirus outbreaks in the region. Ecuador, with a population of 17.4 million, has over 10,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus and has recorded more than 500 deaths. The outbreak of the disease has ravaged the economy of the oil-producing country and overwhelmed sanitary authorities in the largest city of Guayaquil. Venezuelan migrants often work in formal jobs or scrape by begging on the streets. The Chamos Venezuelans in Ecuador Association, a migrant group, have decried evictions and urged fellow Venezuelans not to make unplanned journeys home. These families are the invisible ones of the pandemic. They are currently suffering because of being suddenly evicted from their leases. They are carrying children. There are pregnant women. And they also do not have food to cover nutritional requirements from day to day. Migrants hoping for better opportunities in other Latin American countries will first face closed land borders meant to stem the spread of the virus. Even those who manage to make it home by crossing borders informally or snagging a spot on humanitarian transport will likely be ordered into quarantine in makeshift shelters along the border. The Venezuelan government has said it expects around 15,000 migrants to return, a fraction of the 5 million who have left the country in recent years. Chris Perez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The coronavirus outbreak in Turkey is starting to reach a plateau, President Tayyip Erdogan said on Tuesday. He added the country aims to return to normal life in late May. Cases of the COVID-19 disease have risen to over 95,000 in Turkey, exceeding any country outside Europe and the United States with a death toll of more than 2,000. As part of efforts to tighten those measures, Erdogan said on Monday, a four-day lockdown would be imposed in 31 cities. From Thursday, a national holiday after similar stay-at-home orders were enforced over the last two weekends. Turkish authorities said grocery shops will remain open until 2 p.m. on Thursday and Friday for people to make essential purchases. 
Meanwhile, in the United Kingdom, London's tourist and business hotspots were still largely deserted on Wednesday as Prime Minister Boris Johnson faced a call for an inquiry into his government's handling of the coronavirus crisis. The criticism centers of the government failing to fully explain partial death data, limited testing, or the lack of equipment for hospitals. Johnson initially refrained from approving the stringent controls that other European leaders imposed, but he later closed down the country when projections showed a quarter of a million people could die in the United Kingdom. Since the lockdown, though, the government has given conflicting explanations of why it failed to join a European Union ventilator scheme and admitted there have been problems getting health workers enough protective equipment. Johnson himself battled COVID-19 complications in intensive care earlier this month. He has been put, he has been recuperating but continues to work. Meanwhile, the Fort Myers Police Department sent a special thank you message to the staff at their local Lee Memorial Hospital who are treating COVID-19 patients. They formed a heart outside the hospital by arranging their police vehicles. Officers organized 15 police cars and stood in the middle of the heart holding signs reading FMPD thanks you as the cars flashed red and blue. A clothing supplier in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, has just turned into a mask producer. Nina Armilio tells us why. Export quality clothes used to be manufactured in this factory of MBI Haiti SA. But now, as a country battles the coronavirus pandemic, it has turned into a mass producer of masks and medical gear for local use. No way it will be left behind in the fight against an invisible enemy. According to Yves Estival, director of human resources of the company, production is now at 5,000 face masks per day for the general population, plus medical gear for hospital workers. We take precautions here. First, we check temperatures. Second, people wash their hands. We give water and hand soap as well as disinfectants. And we disinfect the whole facility with bleach and water. Factories, accounting for around a third of textile manufacturing workers, were allowed to reopen some three weeks ago in order to make cloth masks and medical garments after originally being closed as part of the lockdown measures. The government has said it intends on distributing millions of masks for free to the population, more than half of which lives under the poverty line. Haiti now has 57 recorded cases of COVID-19. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. We are at a time when the country is under a state of health emergency. The cooperation of all Filipinos is imperative to avoid the deadly virus. We are calling on everyone to be calm. And most importantly, let us join together in prayer for our country and for the whole world to survive this crisis. You may join us in our daily UNTV community prayer at these hours as splashed on your screens. Those are the reasons behind the news. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And I am Angelo Castro III because we need to know we will always ask why. Good evening.